Yeah. No. Hey guys, it's Sean O'Connell, the managing editor here at Cinema Blend with a recap and analysis of the season finale for the Falcon of the Winter Soldier. This one is called One World, One People. It is bringing to conclusion several of the plot threads that we watched play out over the course of this season, uh, setting up a few things for where directions can go in the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward, uh, and again, um, catching up with Bucky and Sam at the conclusion of their season-long journey. So uh, naturally, I'm gonna have to dive into spoilers for everything that happened in the finale, and we're gonna dive into at length most of the things that played out over the course of the season. So if you haven't yet seen the season finale of Falcon and Winter Soldier, get out of here right now. Go watch it, then come back. While you're here on our YouTube page, make sure that you hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, and that way every time we put a new video here up on a Cinema Blend YouTube page, you guys will be the first ones to hear about it. Okay, I'm going to say right off the bat, good season, bad finale. Just a bad finale. Like from the opening scene, everything about this episode just felt off. Um, and I had a really hard time figuring out what was going on uh, that was making it feel so off. It felt like from the minute it started, like an entire episode or at least like a significant chunk of an episode had just been skipped. Like all of a sudden Bucky and Sharon are just like in New York. And, you know, the, the new costume didn't really get, like, that he heroic of a reveal. I, I think the costume looks great and everything, but it just felt like the pacing of this was immediately off. And the pacing of the episode, in my opinion, never really redeemed itself. I can't, I can't quite figure out what, it's like a different team of people came in to do to direct this episode because the, we came off of episode five, which was so strong uh, and was doing so much cool stuff in terms of character work and the action choreography that had, that had been going on. And there, there was weight and emotion to the decisions. But damn, if this finale didn't feel like it was just trying to fit, you know, 10 pounds of sugar into a five pound bag. And so I don't quite know what was going on with this. Uh, Carly's ultimate beef with the GRC and her overall plan for what she wanted to achieve, it just remained muddy. Like I was looking for clarification for a lot of this stuff as the episode came to a close. And Sam's speech at the end about refugees you know, it's a noble speech, and I'm glad that he gave it, but it kind of felt like that whole scene was in there because the show didn't really succeed in explaining what the Flag Smashers were standing for uh, in their own terms. Like, I get why they're upset with the GRC, but what were they trying to accomplish with this final confrontation? What, they, by trying to move the members out and prevent the vote, like, what, that's going to delay what would be the inevitable? Like, what point were you trying to pull off? I don't, I, I don't know what I expected uh, or wanted from the Flag Smashers ultimate goal, but I, I didn't get it from this. The fight choreography, it just was subpar. Uh, and, and that's in comparison to things that we've seen like in this season. I thought that the aerial stunts and the fight choreography that we saw like in the pilot of this season or in the season premiere was so much more impressive than the helicopter stunts uh, and Sam's aerial maneuvers that we got in the conclusion of this one. And it, it can't boil down to just something as, as easy as one was shot in daylight, one was shot in dark, but I couldn't really quite tell what was going on here. It was edited in a choppy, somewhat confusing way. The fights between Bucky and the super soldiers looked like they were edited and chopped to a million pieces. I can't say enough about how the execution of this episode was just disappointing. Not even the themes and not the content. I'm talking about the, the technical execution of this episode. I thought the pacing of it was off. I thought it sprinted through some things that it really needed to sit and wait on. Like Bucky's resolution with Mr. Nakajima, like that thing moved at lightning speed. I, I just don't, <laughs> it just flew by. Like. He comes in and he confesses to killing his son and then like he gets one of those cheesy oh, look through the window and see that Mr. Nakajima is, is moving on with his life. And But I, I saved two decisions uh, for this second section, which I'm calling real head scratchers. The first one has to be uh, John Walker's redemption. Like what? Like we're just okay with John Walker now? Like that's, I don't understand why Bucky and Sam, like the, the, the Sam head nod toward John Walker it, it, to say essentially to him like, yeah, we're cool. Like what? You're cool? You're cool with John Walker? Like he's deranged because he tried to stop a truck from going over uh, because temporarily he remembered that he was supposed to be a soldier. No, that's not earned. None of that was earned. Um, that was not a good redemption arc for John Walker. And what is his purpose moving forward? I listen more than anything. I understand that in the MCU, a lot of stuff is is you stick a pin in it and table it for later. And it's cool to see him turn into a US agent and to get a, the costume uh, 
that is comic accurate, you know, the black and, and red. And, and we don't know enough about Valentina and who she's working for and what she's trying to put together and the fact that she's recruiting Walker. But I need a little bit more explanation for it if I'm going to know by the end of this season how I'm supposed to feel about John Walker. Um, I thought that they were setting up John Walker to be a stooge. You know, that he had taken the super serum and given himself these powers, but didn't earn them. And by the end of it, Bucky is like slapping him on the back and they're making jokes at each other. And I just, I doubt that whole redemption arc was not earned in the least bit. Second head scratcher of the episode, uh, Sharon Carter is a power broker. Okay, so a lot of us predicted this. Um, you know, plenty of things I read online said that Sharon Carter was going to be the power broker. But like, you're trying to tell me that Sharon Carter, and you know, no disrespect to her, but she like, she went into Madripoor, which is supposed to be one of the most uh, criminally infested and devious places on the planet and uh, emerged as a uh, weapons dealer and, and super powerful shady corrupt uh, force of nature in this place no i just don't know uh no and you know she's from the minute that she showed up in new york city and did this like bait and switch with bucky where she was like wearing a facial mask and and took it off and he was like what are you doing here and she's like well it's not a big deal no one's even looking for me here anyway then why are you wearing the mask like i didn't understand I didn't understand that at all. That was a really confusing. So, you know, when she hired Batrock uh, and put him on the scene uh, to infiltrate Carly in the GRC, people suggested that that was the hat tip, that she was the power broker. I honestly held on to the fact that she was ultimately working for someone else. And I thought it was going to be Thunderbolt, Ross. It's fine if it isn't. And, and listen, if it's a, if it's explained eventually down the line, cool. But I don't really love um, Sharon as the power broker. I don't, I guess Secret Invasion feels like the place where it could start to take place. Secret Invasion is going to be another uh, television show that's coming to Disney+. Plus. And I have a friend of mine who's been talking to me about the fact that he thinks Sharon Carter, if, if in fact that she uh, ended up being the power broker, which she was confirmed to be in this episode, that she might be a Skrull. But if that's the case, I'm going to be super annoyed because I don't want every uh, character betrayal or, you know, backstab in the MCU to just be like, oh, well, they're a scroll. But now that Sharon has been, you know, put back into position in the CIA and uh, was already, you know, calling people at the end of the episode in the mid-credits sequence to start to manipulate how to abuse her power from within our government, I just need to see where it's going. However, let's end on some positive notes because I really don't want the disappointing finale uh, to wash away a lot of the good that I thought was accomplished over the course of this season and 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 really the scene that that I liked the most uh, in this episode was the stuff with Isaiah at the end and you know you could make an argument that Isaiah probably wouldn't want that statue you know like I know that he because but Sam at one point said like I'm gonna get you recognition you deserve to be you know realized for what you accomplished and it's i think it's sweet that he got him included in the captain america memorial he should have been there from the get-go um and isaiah's reaction and, and part of it's because of carl lumbly's delivery like it's a terrific performance by him sam's ultimately going to make a great uh, captain america he's going to make a fantastic captain america and i'm really glad that he ended up with the shield uh he's compassionate he's obviously action savvy the the costume's fantastic like i can't say enough good things about the costume it's literally ripped right from the pages of the comics and um so they did a great job with that i love the blend of the shield and the and the wings and he's gonna be just just great um bucky man i don't know uh bucky's a wanderer again he crossed off all the names in the book but that wasn't as satisfying as, I, as it needed to be uh he's gonna be a bit of a nomad again no pun intended uh nomads <laughs> different character in the mcu and um you know, it ends on a on a on a fish fry, on a crab boil. <sighs> it, did he get much further than when he was when he started the season? No, you know, not necessarily. No, made some progress, I guess. It's gonna have to do the work. I'm not quite sure where we're gonna see Bucky uh, in the MCU moving forward, but God, that's my biggest complaint. So my biggest complaint about the Winter Soldier, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or I guess now Captain America and the Winter Soldier, is that as a result of of rushing through it in the finale, to me not a lot of the stuff that the show wanted to accomplish landed. So I'm going to walk away from this one saying that uh, it was moderately successful. And I'm glad that we have Sam Wilson as uh, the new Captain America. Some of that dialogue in the middle of it too, though, when, you know, that guy calls him Black Falcon and the other guy's like, no, that's Captain America. Like, all right, man. I like, we get it. <laughs> I, I have friends of mine who, who rip uh, the dialogue in the MCU shows uh, so far as being really a clunky exposition and I try to defend it but there were too many examples in this finale of when people said stuff and I was just like 
are we really so tell me if i'm being a negative nelly uh i want to hear if the show especially the finale like let's focus on the finale before we talk about the season at large uh let me know in the comments down below if you thought the finale worked so much of it just just zoomed by i'm shocked i'm actually shocked i'm shocked that it played out this way ultimately uh, when I step back from it, you know, this season could have been an email. You could have just told me, uh, oh yeah, by the way, and uh, Sam's Captain America now. Let's move on. We'll be back with Loki. Loki drops in June, and uh, Black Widow's coming right after that in July. So this was Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Again, I want to hear from you guys. Head to the comments down below. If you're here on our Cinema Blend YouTube page, thank you so much for paying attention to the analysis we did for the entire season of this show. We'll be back soon. Hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, make sure you don't miss any of our videos. And uh, we appreciate all your support for everything that we're doing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe.